Lingua Ignota, Sinner Get Ready, album review, let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about the latest from Lingua Ignota, aka Kristen Hader, and th this freaking project, man. Now, while I wasn't that wild about her debut album, Let the Evil of His Own Lips Cover Him, I was certainly aware of Kristen's music around this time, mostly because she was dropping some really great collabs, she was landing guest spots on some fantastic works from Full of Hell, as well as that The Body album that she showed up on. She absolutely stole the show on that thing. But it was around the time of her All Bitches Die album that I really became fascinated with Kristen music. It was noisy, but it was her performances that really blew my mind. They had this way of being animalistic and intense, but also kind of awe-inspiring, even beautiful at times. Elements of classical, noise, extreme metal, all amongst these very intense visual spoken word performances. I mean, Kristen's music is not for everyone, I will absolutely say that, but if you're into a lot of really weird shit, man, you're probably gonna love this. There was also Caligula, some, some nice, easy-going, laid-back Sunday music there, trust me. It's pretty awesome, though. Now, these new singles are seriously a departure for Kristen because they are much less heavy and raw and animalistic than a lot of the stuff that she's put out the last couple of years and are much more haunting and twisted in their own right. So I didn't really know what to expect from this album, but I think it's just another knockout, really. This album starts off with the Order of the Spiritual Virgins. I mean, this is a pretty awe-inspiring intro. This is absolutely staggering. Kristen's music, you know, while it's always a slow burn, it usually does grab you right off the bat. I mean, this is so chilling. It's disturbing, and it's twisted, but much like a lot of Lingua Ignota's early work, it's also gorgeous at times. You can cut the tension with a knife, and I love her sort of husky vocals that we get here. I mean, it is very twisted, and it is very disturbing at times like put this up against Annie singing in Midsommar and a lot of Kristen's usual suspects show up here too neoclassical some dark wave but like I said shockingly no metal but I think that actually is okay it's just as dread inducing trust me I who bend beyond the tall grass is actually probably my favorite track here I love how freaking commanding this is like just when i thought she genuinely like let it all out on the table on caligula i'm shocked by just how raw some of these vocal performances still come off especially on this track there are there are times here that literally sounds like her vocal cords are about to get ripped out of her throat and then we get these eerie bells here and this slow pace the somber organs as well. Kristen's music is incredibly hard to classify. It's emotional and it's really somber and tragic at times, but in its own way, it's also animalistic and vicious and it cuts you, man. Many hands, once again, I mean, this track is simply put dread-inducing. Between the tightly wound strumming and the vocals here that are just creeping along at this slow pace, there is so much going on. Like, yes, it's not as noisy or as vicious or as animalistic at times, but this album still packs so much of a punch. And her performance here, my God, I mean, never once is it for the light of heart. But you also, more often than not, can't look away. And Pennsylvania Furnace, while I'll admit was a little disheartening when I first heard it as a single, I was expecting something, you know, heavy, man. This track in the shape of this album just really just makes my eyes grow even wider. This, while just as haunting and dark, is honestly gorgeous, like absolutely beautiful at points. Classical music has always sort of played at least some part of Kristen's music, but this is larger than life for her. This is gargantuan. And Repent Now, Confess Now is just sheer anxiety uh, put to tape. I mean, like I said, if you're not a fan of Lingua Ignota already, uh, just try con just to describe this to somebody. It's incredibly hard between the multi-layered vocals here and the very tense plucking we get. 
It is so bruised. It is so tormented. It is hard to look away, though. That we have the secret lineament of judgment. I mean, what even is this track? This is dense. The keyboards here very quickly sort of, you know, escalate and elevate up into this very heavenly or hellish drone. And I will say this, if you didn't get this already, a lot of these tracks you do have to sit with. This is not just now you're going to pop on and instantly take everything in. I would recommend, you know, three or four listens to this thing before you really kind of toss it aside and decide it's not your thing. And if I had to nitpick deep down, I, I do miss the rawness of Caligula. But come on, man. This is still staggering. And the, the, the vocal snippets that come in make this even more twisted. Now, I, I, I hate to nitpick, but, you know, while this is probably on par with Caligula for the most part, there is part of me, like I said, that does miss the rawness of her last album. Don't hate me, I've never been that into perpetual flame of Centralia. Matter of fact, leading up to this album, this track kind of disappointed me. There are portions to this track that are beautiful, but I can also assure you that there's seven tracks here that are much more beautiful. I can say the same thing about how haunting it is. Yeah, it's chilling. It's haunting. But there's so many better tracks here that do the same thing. Even lyrically, it doesn't feel like as much of a gut punch. And that goes double for Man is Like a Spring Flower. I don't know. Linguig Nota's music to me has always come off so meticulous, which is why when I hear a track as messy and sloppy as this track it's shocking this is the first track here that just hasn't had me sitting here in awe of what i was listening to and, and the five minute very wispy fantasy based instrumental that we get here is average it's 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 fine but still it's i think the least compelling track here however the solitary brethren of refrata is a fantastic finale this is hellish. I mean, once again, we get numerous vocal snippets on this track. They add so much to this album. I love the sweeping vocals and this sort of jazzy backing instrumental that is so odd. It's warm, but it's also terrifying. Like, I hate to be an A24 nerd again, but this really reminds me of, like, that final scene in The Witch. It's stunning. It's an awesome finale. So, while not as raw or metal-inspired or vicious as Caligula, I think Sinner Get Ready is on par with that album and just as disturbing and twisted and hellish for other reasons. Between the spoken word performances and the hellish and heavenly vocal performances, this is still awesome. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart. It's certainly not for everybody. And yeah, it's part of me misses the rawness of her last album. But still, Kristen Hader, Lingua Ignota's music right now is absolutely awe-inspiring more often than not. It is a gem of a weird sort of neoclassical and dark wave album. Go check it out. Go give it a go give it a shot yourself and report back. But for now, I'm feeling a decent eight on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.